You are watching With a Cup of Tea, the High Plains Book Awards edition, a production of This House of Books, an independent bookstore cooperative and tea shop in downtown Billings, Montana. Now here's our show. Welcome to This House of Books. Uh, we have with us today Pam Houston, who's a finalist for the High Plains Book Fest. She has a, a book that uh, uh, is very well regarded. It's called Deep Creek, Finding Hope in the High Country. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But first of all, Pam, maybe uh, you could tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure, Mark. Um, thanks for inviting me on. Uh, I am Pam Houston. I have written seven books now of fiction and nonfiction. Deep Creek is my first memoir. Um, I am a writer and also a teacher. I teach in the graduate writing program at UC Davis and also in the low residency program at the Institute of American Indian Arts. And I co-founded an organization called Writing by Writers, which puts on uh, teaching events for lots of non-university affiliated writers. So I do spend a great deal of my life teaching. Um, I also live at 9,000 feet in Colorado in the San Juan Mountains, and I raise Icelandic sheep here and have a few other animals. So um, those are kind of the three prongs of my life is the teaching, the writing, and then the living up here and taking care of these animals. Okay, fantastic. Well, tell us about Deep Creek. Deep Creek is my first memoir. Uh, most of my books have been fiction or essays. So this is my first memoir and um, it tells the story of, so I was in graduate school at the University of Utah getting a PhD in writing and Cowboys Are My Weakness, which was my first book had just come out and I had been paid for Cowboys Are My Weakness $21,000, and it was more money than I had ever seen. And I was a graduate student making $4,500 a year, you know, as a teaching assistant. And so when my agent gave me the check for $21,000, she said, don't spend it all on hiking boots, because she kind of knew my type. And uh, so I got in my car with my brand new book of short stories and I drove all over the Intermountain West looking for a place to call home and uh, to put that money down, to do something you know good with that money. And I got here to Creed, Colorado and was shown this 120 acre high mountain meadow surrounded on three sides by 12,000 foot peaks and one side by the Rio Grande and uh, an old barn and a little log house. And I just, I was here the third week of September. So the Aspen groves were doing their thing and I just fell completely in love with it. And my $21,000 represented exactly 5% down. And I was a recent grad school student. I didn't have three pages of another book to rub together, didn't have a job really. But, um, but the real, the realtor guy said, you know, I think Donna Blair, who was the widow who was selling the ranch, I think Donna Blair is going to like the idea of you. So why don't you give me a signed copy of Cowboys Are My Weakness and your $21,000 and I'll see what I can do. And Donna Blair sold me the ranch for 5% down and a signed hardcover book of short stories. And she carried the note herself because no bank in the world would have lent me $10, nor should they have. And the next 27 years became, you know, the story of my life. This place grew me up and it taught me responsibility and it taught me how to care for the land and care for animals. and. Um, it was an insane thing to do for me to buy that ranch with no job nearby. And, but I did it because I fell in love. And, and then it taught me everything I needed to know about living. And that's basically what Deep Creek is about. It's about my 25 year at that time relationship with this 120 acres and how it turned me into a decent human being. Now, I'm wondering about the title because 
it's Deep Creek, but then finding hope in the high country. So the full title is Deep Creek, Finding Hope in the High Country. And I'm wondering what, um, what hope are you finding? Hmm. Um, well, you know, that of course has changed over the years. Um, when I first came, I found hope because I was safe here and um, because I was happy every morning I woke up and looked out my window, you know. Um, but it's almost always been true my whole life that, you know, there's almost not been anything wrong with me that a walk in the mountains can't fix. Um, you know, I, I find hope by going outside and noticing the leaves and the trees or the flowers on the ground or the sound of the hawk or, um, you know, the, the, the colors in the sunset. Um, you know, these days here in the, in the Southwest, um, it's, you know, there are fires, a lot of fires, you know, the book is, is about hope, but it's also about grief and um, how afraid many of us are that, you know, the scientists will be right and this part of the United States will become uninhabitable in our lifetimes, you know, and this was a terrible year. Um, I'm looking out at a dripping roof because we got a couple inches of snow overnight, which was kind of a miracle, you know, because Colorado's been on fire just like the rest of the West. So, you know, hope is a, is a moving target. And um, I guess the ranch has taught me different ways to be more creaturely. And like, like I said, to live more as part of, part of the earth rather than on top of it, you know, and I guess the hope now is that more of us could do that, you know, with this pandemic, maybe I, I'd like to believe that COVID would kind of show us, you know, that we don't really need so much of what we have, you know, that we need sleep and good food and clean water and clean air to breathe, you know, literally, you know, that's so amazing that this year has become so much about breathing. Um, so, so anyway, you know, I think hope has changed over the years. Uh, at first, when I got here, it was hope that I could actually have a future where I felt happy and safe. And now hope is that we'll, um, we'll learn to be better caretakers before it's too late, you know, and, uh, and take care of this land that we, that has given us, at least here in the American West, you know, so much joy and, and, and delight in our lives. Well, tell us about who might like to read this book. Who would be your audience? Well, um, you know, I, I have a, a lot of loyal readers who read Cowboys Are My Weakness, which was the book that sort of gave me my whole career 30 years ago. And I think this book is kind of uh, the answer to their potential question, whatever happened to that cowboy woman, you know, <laughs> like, and, and the answer is in the book, you know, she, I, I say, I finally realized I could be the cowboy and, um, and that's kind of what's happened. So it's kind of the grown up version of that girl, um, who's learned a few things over the course of 30 years. And, um, but, you know, honestly, at, at my readings, uh, I have a lot of ranchers, I have a lot of sheep farmers. I, I, this book has kind of pulled in a wider audience, um, you know, than my standard audience, which is like the girls with the Subarus and the dogs with bandanas around their necks, you know, that's who, that's who loves my books. Um, but, you know, lots of other people do too. But I've really noticed with this book, there's... Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of farmers, a lot of ranchers, a lot of people who have whatever deep connection to the land. So that's what this book is about through and through. It's about how uh, if you connect to a piece of ground and if you take care of it, it takes care of you back, you know, whether it's feeding you literally or whether it's feeding you spiritually or whether it's giving you a safe place to be in the world, which was true about me. I grew up in a 
a pretty dangerous household, um, you know, where I never felt safe. So this was really my first home, my first and truest home. Um, and just the way, you know, the way this place has taught me that, you know, we're not separate from the land, like we're not here to own entertainment or conquer it, you know, we're, we're of it. And, um, you know, again, like so much of what I've learned about being a human, I've learned because of having this thing that I'm responsible for, uh, whether that's a herd of sheep or, um, you know, the pasture in a drought year or, um, you know, taking, having to evacuate during the West Fork fire, you know, there, there's a million ways you become in relationship with the land. So that's, in fact, who loves this book. Everyone who, uh, either because they live on it or they own it or they just love it or they visited it. A lot of, I get letters from a lot of people whose grandparents owned a farm and they kind of grew up there in summers. But anybody who's had that experience of the land kind of getting under your, your skin and changing you, because that's what the book's about. Like so many things about this year have been about learning to appreciate the stuff you do have, you know, and I just really hope that's what happens, you know, that people are like, oh, I don't really need cheese that came across an ocean, you know, <laughs> like the cheese that's made down the street is just fine. Or, you know, I don't really need to get on airplanes to feel like I'm le leading an exciting life. You know, I can try a different hiking trail. And, you know, I'm, I mean, I, I mentioned those two things because I'm guilty of of French cheese and a lot of airplanes, you know, I, but I'm seeing myself, you know, thinking what matters more, you know, and maybe because of the intersection of COVID and climate free fall, you know, we'll, we'll kind of get it, you know, more people will get it and, and we'll try to make changes in our lives. I mean, that's my hope. I know I will, you know, I know I will, I will make changes. I, I won't be perfect. None of us will be, but I'm definitely going to make changes because of what I learned this year. Okay. Well, thanks a lot for, uh, for visiting with us today. All right. Uh, I sure appreciate it. And uh, if you're, if you're able to get up to billing sometime, please let us know. We'd uh, love to see if we could set up a live event for you. That would be terrific. I love Billings. I've been there many times over the years for various book events and uh, it's a great town. So I hope to get up there soon. Thanks. This program has been produced by This House of Books in collaboration with the High Plains Book Awards. The Book Awards were established to recognize regional authors and literary work that examines life on the High Plains. Nominations will be accepted starting in January 2021 on the website highplainsbookawards.org.